So in our last screencast, we talked about the process of transcription, how we went from DNA to a strand of mRNA, and that was kind of a simplified version of what we're actually doing. And now, before we talk about RNA splicing, we need to talk a little bit about um, what that strand of, of mRNA actually looks like. And we're actually going to have to do a little bit of mRNA processing. So this video, we'll talk a little bit about mRNA processing. So what you have in front of you now is a image of what that mRNA strand looks like after the process of transcription has been completed. So there's a bunch of components to that. Um, you have your five prime cap, which is on the five prime end. We'll talk about what that's there for. Um, then we have our five prime UTR, and that UTR stands for untranslated region. Uh, then we have this coding region, which is that transcription unit that we learned about last time. And, and this is Part of this will actually be translated now uh, into a protein. It always starts uh, with that start codon. Uh, once we get to the stop codon, beyond the stop codon, we have the three prime UTR, the three prime untranslated region. Uh, and then we have a poly A signal, which we'll define in a bit, followed by a uh, poly A tail of varying lengths depending uh, upon the particular gene that you're coding for. So these are, are the five pieces that we're working with, uh, and we'll talk about all five of them individually, and then we'll actually go back and look at transcription again and see where these things are added on and why they're added on. Okay, so one thing I want to make clear before uh, we move any further, what we've talked about so far um, is the production and the processing of, of what's called pre-mRNA. Um, so we're not actually looking at mRNA yet because we need to do a little bit of work for on it before we can actually send it out to be translated in the cytoplasm. So. Uh, there's three basic reasons that you, you undergo pre-mRNA processing. There's three basic reasons um, that you are going to add all the things onto that mRNA strand that, that we're going to talk about. And um, the first one is it, by adding on the 5' prime cap and the poly tail, uh, that allows us to uh, export this mRNA strand from the nucleus much easier than if those things weren't there. Uh, the second reason is it's going to facilitate ribosomal attachment, which means that the ribosome will be able to identify the mRNA strand uh, and attach onto it much easier with the five prime cap than uh, had it not been there. And then the third reason is to prevent that mRNA strand from being broken down by exonucleases within the cytoplasm. Um, an exonuclease is just an enzyme um, that if that would just break down a strand of mRNA nucleotide by nucleotide. So uh, in this picture here, you see a little uh, Pac-Man guy, and he's just chewing up all of the nucleotides. And this is basically what the exonuclease does. So by adding on the five prime cap and the poly tail, um, you kind of prevent the exonuclease from breaking down uh, the mRNA molecule. And the, the exonuclease will um, still break it down, but just won't do it as quickly. Okay, so now that we've talked about what the different parts of the mRNA are and why we need them because of the presence of the exonucleases in the uh, cytoplasm, let's talk about how the process of mRNA processing uh, actually takes place. Um, so, again, using the same types of videos that we've used in the past, we can see that the um, goal of mRNA processing um, is to protect the RNA and to set it up in such a way so that um, when it gets sent out into the cytoplasm, uh, it's safe for that mRNA um, to be translated. So again, we have RNA polymerase, uh, we have these new ideas and new things called cleavage factors, and poly-A polymerase, and we'll see what each of those does. Um, so again, here we can see what we saw before in transcription. We can see now the beginning of transcription with the RNA polymerase and the creation of our mRNA strand. Now, the very first thing that you'll notice here um, is the addition of a methylated cap, and, and uh, this animation calls it the methylated cap. We'll call it the five prime cap. And this is added on so that the exonucleases can't destroy uh, the strand of, of mRNA. It's on here so that it acts as almost a cap so that the exonucleases can't start to degrade this mRNA strand. And that's on the five prime end. And you'd also see here, you're not seeing in the animation, but you'll also see here uh, an untrans the five prime uh, UTR, the five prime untranslated region. And we'll explain what that does when we talk about the 3-prime on transit region. Right, so we're going to go through elongation in transcription, go through the entire process of elongation and transcription, get down to the termination region. All right, now our mRNA has been released. Now here we have the AAUAAA, and that's the signal um, for polyadenylation, and, and polyadenylation is the addition of a poly-A tail. So we're going to have 
cleavage factors that are going to identify that as, as well as another strand uh, and attach onto those parts of the mRNA strand. And, and cleavage just, in this case, means to separate. So um, we're going to add those two cleavage factors, another enzyme to kind of bracket those together, um, whose name you don't need to worry about. And our poly, uh, poly-A polymerase is going to come in and actually cleave or break off part of the mRNA strand. So this top piece is that big, long mRNA strand that we saw um, being transcribed. And this is just a curl piece underneath. And we're just snapping this piece off. Uh, using the poly-A polymerase. And what the poly-A polymerase is going to do now is going to create a long poly-A tail through the pro process of uh, polyadenylation. So the cleavage factor is going to be released, and eventually this cleavage factor here will also be released. Um, and we have the poly-A tail now. It's just going to add a, a series of adenine nucleotides to the end of the strand that we already transcribed. Right? These purple things that you see coming on here um, are proteins, and the proteins attach onto this long strand of adenines, and that's just there um, to add additional protection uh, for that sequence of adenines. And this length of the polyotail depends on uh, the particular gene that you're dealing with. And some genes have polyotails that are thousands of um, adenine molecules long. So this will be created. Eventually, the poly polymerase will be released, right, and our original cleavage factor is gone, and now what we have is just a series of, of uh, adenines. And these adenines here act um, as a buffer. So the exonucleus over time, uh, this mRNA strand will be degraded from this end moving towards this end. They'll actually, the exonucleases will snap off the individual um, adenine nucleotides. But you can see we have a lot of room here to play with. Right? There's a lot of work that the exonucleases need to be able to do before they can start to actually degrade the gene that we're going to translate. And if we go back and look here at, slowly, slowly, where this poly-A uh, polymerase cleaved this, if it, if it actually comes in here and cleaves this in a different location, if instead of cleaving it here, it cleaves it down here, for, say, for example, you're going to create a different gene. And when we talk about translation, you'll see what that means. But you, because of polyadenylation, you can actually create different proteins um, from the same gene. And that's basically the process of uh, mRNA processing. Uh, it allows us to add on some things to the mRNA strand before we splice it. We haven't even spliced it yet. Before we splice it um, so that we can protect it when it does end up leaving the nucleus.